All right, so you are a real estate flipper, wholesaler, landlord, even a real estate agent, and you have goals. And of course, you want to hit those goals. So uh, here are my seven top tips to hitting every single goal every single time. Now, of course, this is not uh, the only, only tips for hitting your goals, uh, but these are really the seven that I live by and that I try to do every single day and for every single goal. Uh, that I set for myself in my personal life, in my spiritual life, and of course here in business as well. So um, before we begin, subscribe, hit the like button, share it if you find this valuable, and of course drop in the comments. If you have questions, drop a comment. If you have any tips and even uh, want to share some tips that you have and how you achieve your goals, drop a comment as well. So let's get started. So tip numero uno, it's number one, know your why. Now, I know that is probably the most overstated uh, statement in all of business, all of real estate, in every self-help book, business book, anything like that. But knowing your why is absolutely crucial to dredging through uh, the mud and the muck and the problems that come with running a business in general, really running a, a life in general. Knowing your why will help to keep you on track. And in this business, when you deal with other people's problems, uh, you deal with cancellations, delays. You might go several months of just making an absolute killing to all of a sudden you go two, three, four months without making a dime and maybe even feeling depressed. Knowing your why and being able to fall back on your purpose, your mission, and um, really why you wake up every day, why you want to make an impact, going back to that will help you push through those hard times and uh, get back into really the land of abundance or, or, or just to to know why you're doing what you're doing. And for someone like myself, I struggle with this all the time. Um, there's some days where we might close a phenomenal deal, make 40, 50, 60 grand in one wholesale deal. And the next day I might wait, I might wake up and just be like, why am I doing this? Why do I want to go to work? I don't feel like calling people. I don't feel like going to, to work, but being able to go back to my why and knowing why I wake up every day and knowing that there are people out there whose lives I can change today really helps me to get my butt out of bed, I wake up early, I do my routine and come here and just grind my face off for a few hours until I go back home. So tip number two, be realistic about your goals, but set high goals. So when I say be realistic, I don't mean be average or set average goals. You know, if you think the average agent in your area only makes 40 grand a year, uh, don't set a goal of 45 or 50 because you feel like that's realistic. What I'm saying is if this is year one and you're just trying to figure this out, don't set a $10 million uh, year this year. I mean, as far as actual revenue. Now setting in five years, 10 years, $10 million a year in revenue is a good, is a good point to go to, but you've got to backtrack that. And even um, something as high as $1 million your first year, it's very doable. And there are a lot of people who get into this business and they hit those kind of numbers in their first year. Yes, it is unlikely. It comes with a lot of challenges, comes with a, a lot of money needing to be put into the business, but it is very possible. So setting a high goal, like a million dollars when everyone else is making 50, is very doable and very possible with a lot of hard work and education and knowledge and, and putting everything you know right into practice and taking a lot of action. And the way I think about it is if I set a million dollar goal and I only hit 70% of that, I'm making 700 grand. You know, if I set a $10 million, uh, $10 million a year goal and I only hit 700 grand, that's only 7%. Now imagine hitting 7% of every goal you have. That's pretty poor. Even if 700 grand is a lot of money, that being 7% of your goal, at least for myself, I might find that depressing. Like I might, I might feel like a, a whole failure. So that's why I'm gonna set goals of a million, $2 million, something like that. And uh, I know it's, it's more than most people, which is kind of irrelevant to me. I don't really care what other people are doing, but I know that it's life changing for me. I know that it is a, a high goal It's gonna be a stretch, but I know it's very possible. And thankfully I have uh, friends and mastermind members who do that and I can go to them and learn from them as well. Tip number three is of course, know your numbers. So how can you even hit your goal if you don't even know how to get there? So one thing that I love to do with the goals is I like to backtrack. If I wanna to get to a million dollars and if I know my average deal is say $20,000, then I know I need to close 50 deals in a year to hit a gross revenue of a million dollars. And then I just backtrack that. 
how many calls do I need to make? How many letters do I need to send? What do I need to do online in order to get a one deal and then times that by 50? You know, if it, if it takes me, uh, say 3,000 letters to get one deal, then I times that by 50 and I know, what is that, 150,000 letters or something like that um, over the course of a year that I might need to send and, and invest in in order to get that 50 deal, uh, 50 deal a year, year. And um, knowing your numbers is key, writing that plan, sticking to it, and trusting the numbers. You have to trust the numbers for sure. Number four, overshoot. Overshoot on your action. So just like I just stated, if I know that I need to send 3,000 letters to get one deal, I'm not gonna send that bare minimum because there are ebbs and flows. This month, I might need to send 3,000 to get one deal. Next month, I might send 10,000 and not get any deal. The following month, I may send only 500 and get two deals. So there's this crazy uh, ebb and flow when it comes to uh, volume and momentum. So that's why for me, I always overshoot. If I know I need 3,000 letters to uh, get one deal, I'm gonna realistically try to do four or five uh, letters a month or postcards a month in order to get that one deal. And so that is to, to ensure that I don't undershoot my goal. I wanna at least hit the goal and preferably overhit it as well. So if you overshoot your action, and uh, if you're a little bit under that, then you're gonna hit your goal. And I think that's crucial. And I think a lot of people, uh, they measure their goals and they try to shoot for that minimum. And then instead of achieving their goal, they hit way low. So overestimating what you need to do, overestimating how much marketing you need to spend, how much marketing you need to do, how many doors you need to knock, how many cold calls you need to do, overestimating that and then overshooting that as well will help you hit your goals. Number five, possibly the most important uh, to hit your goals is that is be consistent in everything you do. Whatever action plan that you write out, be consistent. Do it every single day. Write out the, the actions that you and your team need to do every single day and stick with it. I hear a lot of people who say, oh, direct mail doesn't work. I sent a thousand letters. I got three calls and no deals. I just wasted 600 bucks, direct mail doesn't work. But let me tell you, it works. And when you're consistent over and over and over again, every month, every week, every day, uh, you really start to build momentum. And there's this, there's this really crazy thing that happens with momentum. I don't really know how to explain it, but what happens is when you consistently do the same thing over and over again, it's like you don't get traction. You kind of see a little bit of results, a little bit of results, maybe you go through a little dry spell, and then bam, all of a sudden you get like five or six deals in one week. And you're like, where did all of this come from? And it's because you've been consistent in your actions over and over and over again. You've been consistent in your marketing, consistent in your follow-up. And just for whatever reason, uh, that consistency like begins to pile up and build this momentum uh, where people go, hey, Chris has been contacting me every month about selling my house. Six months ago, I wasn't ready, but now my tenant just up and moved out. And they were behind three months, they left this house in a wreck. But Chris has been calling me, he's been texting me, he's been sending letters, he's just been checking in saying how I'm doing, I'm gonna call him. And so things like that happen and they only happen when you're consistent in your efforts and in your action. Number six, grow your network. As you've heard, your network is your net worth. And that is probably true, absolutely true. So you can learn a lot from other people who are in this business. You can get deals by referrals. Um, if you're wholesaling and, and you know other wholesalers, you could potentially get extra deals even if you're a fix and flipper and you're connecting with other agents or wholesalers or even other investors. There's a potential of other deals in that. And outside of just the individual deals, there's that knowledge and that rubbing elbows. And for me, that the biggest shift when it came to networking was when I joined a mastermind a year ago. And we were doing really well, super part-time, um, part-time employee and um, I joined a mastermind and it's just like from my very first coaching call with someone who was doing like 300, 300 deals a year, just instantly changed my mindset. And really what happens is when you get with other people who, who are on a higher level than you, they are on a higher level of thinking, higher level of action, higher level of, of goal setting and systems, it just opens your mind in a phenomenal, phenomenal way. So for me, joining a mastermind is like within a, within a month, we had literally uh, two and a half times uh, our, our regular monthly income. I'm going from about 20 grand a month to all of a sudden 45, 50 grand a month, um, realistically within a month. And that was just because 
uh, the mental shift that I had, just getting around other people who were able to peer into my business and say, hey, you just need to make this little tweak, make this little tweak here, and you're gonna double what you do. And we did, I mean, and last year, uh, we had a projected revenue, we had a goal, and we more than doubled it. And not, I don't really wanna mention that um, as far as the numbers go, but it was, it was phenomenal. And really, I owe that to getting around other people who are really thinking higher than me and, and even getting in a situation when then I can share because when I share knowledge as well to other people and I give value to them, um, it really does something within myself where it motivates me to do it again, motivates me to learn more, motivates me to, to work harder um, and to get back to this grind every day. And so your network really is your net worth. And um, you, there's local meetups, there's online groups, there's masterminds, high level masterminds, um, and so don't don't duck the high ticket masterminds. They're for the most part they're probably worth it. Uh, coaches, mentors, whether they're paid or not, they are probably worth it. And to tell you the truth, for years I was the student of YouTube, and I had a doctorate in uh, just learning by experience and listening to podcasts and and YouTube and all that. Uh, but it was very limiting, and and there's really only so much you can learn from the free resources. Yeah, you could probably learn make a couple hundred grand a year, uh, gross. But then at the end of the year, you look at your net and it'll be small. And really, if you think about it, those high, um, those high achieving individuals, the people who are doing 150, 250, 400 deals a year, they're all in masterminds. They all have coaches. Every single multimillionaire they can ever think of has some sort of coach or, or mentor. So if they're doing it, then why can't small fish like us? I mean, I think we're gonna get the same benefit and the same value out of that. So grow your network. And number seven, last but definitely not least, just do it, just take action. Uh, set your goals, write out your plan, and just start taking action. That is really the only way that you can ever hit any goal is just by doing it and just take action, do it. Uh, whatever you think you can do, you can do it. Whatever you think you can't do, you're correct. So um, the only limitation that you have in this life is really what's right between your two ears. So uh, just remember, if you are in the real estate business, wholesaler, flipper, agent, landlord, whether you are just beginning or if you have years and years of experience, you've been given tools and resources uh, to really go out and change people's lives. And it's really amazing uh, what we can do when we go to these distressed homes and distressed homeowners. We're able to help the homeowner. We're able to uh, help the neighborhood. And that has a ripple effect beyond that. We're able to help ourselves make a profit, our lenders, our buyers, whatever that is. So. Uh, just remember you've been given the tools necessary to go change lives and so if you put if you put off taking action because so there are lives that will never be changed because you decided not to do anything but if you decide and you make that decision to go out and make a difference uh, lives are going to be changed i mean you literally have the ability to change people's family tree because of what you do in business so that's it that's my top seven tips to hitting every goal literally hitting every single goal that you could ever set again subscribe hit the like button hit the notification and what are your tips um, any tips you want to chime in any questions you want to ask drop a comment would love to see what are you doing to hit your goals and uh, until next time take care